alarm ready when. Great. All right, good evening. I'd like to call the Monday, July 24th, 2017 Board of Selectmen's meeting to order. Is anybody taping the meeting? Break in. And Allie for the Board of Selectmen. Um, at this time, we'll stand and say Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So on tonight's agenda, um, at 6.30, we're going to be meeting with the Water Commissioners who will provide the Board of Selectmen with an update on the South Main Street water infiltration site. Um, at 7 o'clock, we'll be meeting with the Finance Committee to discuss future town meeting procedure as well as the process of water chargers. Um, under the consent agenda, we'll be signing the annual Animal Control Officer Warrant, disclosing, uh, disclosing, discussing um, t uh, closing town hall briefly for an employee cookout, approve the Board of Selectmen's minutes from 20 from June 5th, 2017 to June 19th, 2017, um, sign contract for Gen Jessica Thomas, sign a renewal contract for the transfer station with um, Woodward and Current, discuss moving data to a cloud system, approve animal, am animal, ambul I'm having a great time, I feel like I'm at camp again, Anim <laughs> approve ambulance abatements for the month of July 2016, um, and then there's um, various items under personnel, and Charlie has a night off because there's nothing on the board of health. Mm. <laughs> How about that, Charlie? I that <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, we can go right into um, the rel uh, consent agenda. So every year, um, we need to sign the warrant for the animal control officer um, as submitted by town clerk Jackie Brown. These people have until October 1st to renew their licenses for their dogs. What's the board's pleasure? Make a motion to uh, forward the, uh, sign the uh, agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Disco discuss closing town hall briefly for an annual employee cookout. No, it's my understanding this is done annually. In the past, it's been done. So I guess this year is a little bit different because um, the COA and the employees had a, had a joint cookout this year. Um, the um, employees are asking to have a separate cookout. So the time would be different though. Normally they attend that one for two hours. This one mm -hmm. they would have. They want the same. Yeah, everybody hours, gets to go, not just town hall. Everybody that's an employee, employee should yeah, yeah. get to go. Um, I'll make a motion to close the town hall for the two hours. Um, what's the date? Do we have the date here? No, we're just asking. No, they, they don't have a date. They just, um, the time can be set from 12 to 2. 12 to 2, um, just giving the public notice uh, at least a week prior to when it's going to be. Uh, so anybody that has business with the town can take care of it prior or after. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, also, when the town receives um, any donations, I think that the board should look at how those donations um, should be spent. I mean, they're actually given to the town, and I think it's up to this board or whatever board um, look at how those funds are spent and where they would be best allocated. Agree. Okay. Um, it's not on the agenda, but I think that we should make that, and I think we should really discuss it. So let's put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, how about the meeting after? The next meeting, you won't be attending. So okay. if you'd like to speak to it, we probably should put it on the 21st, I think it is. Yeah. All right. Approve um, Board of Selectmen minutes from June 5th and... June 19th, what's the board's pleasure? Has you, have you had a chance to review them? Does anybody have any questions or concerns or changes? I saw no issues with them. I saw no issues. Make a motion to, rec uh, to approve. No, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is the contract done for Jeff? You're part of it? No? No. Okay. Um, we really need to get that done so she can have a contract. Do you think you'd be able to get that done by the end of the week? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. All right. Um, 
maybe we should make a motion to have the personnel chair sign the contract once it's received from town council so it's not holding it up till the next meeting. So That's fine with me if you can want you make that motion, Charlie? I'll make the motion that uh, the uh, chairman of the personnel board, uh, Selectman Joe, sign the contract um, when he is uh, available. All right. Um, I'll second that, and we'll go to the uh, personnel chair. I uh, uh, have a motion made and seconded to allow me to sign the contract once it's presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, next, we have the um, renewal for Woodward and Curran from the transfer station. Um, you were the Board of Health Chair last time. Do you know if, there's an, if that's an increase from the previous contract? It doesn't appear to be, but I'm not sure exactly what the numbers were. Right. Um, I think the hard copy's here. The, Kim, did you notice an increase on that? I haven't seen the new contract. I haven't seen the new contract. <laughs> I think they were talking about 4%. Um, it's 29000 including the, everything, monitoring, inspections, total lump sum. No, I don't think it's that far of a deviation from last year's, but I don't okay. recall off the top of my head. Okay, if you want to hold it open. Hold on. Twenty seven eight fifty. Twenty eight seven fifty? Twenty seven eight fifty. Twenty seven eight fifty. Yeah. Two thousand. Yeah. Um, make a motion to move doors. Do you have a second? second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, moving right along. This is like a blazing speed. Discuss moving data to the cloud system with the town accountant. Hi, town accountant. How Hi. are you? I'm well. <laughs> um, I just wanted to um, have this on your agenda. Um, our actual contract with data is up at the end of this month, so we would normally renew for August 1st. Um, the MIS budget is usually handled by the town administrator, and since we have that position vacant, um, they understand that and they know that we might not be ready to commit to anything at this point. Um, we did budget to go to the cloud um, for VADAR. Um, that's going to be $6,990 for eight users. Um, I have no issue whether we go or we don't. I think going is a great idea. Um, I think there are a lot of advantages to doing that. Um, but again, it's not my budget. It's the budget that the town administrator handles. I don't know if it would make the most sense to hold off on advancing to the cloud until that whole department can be looked at by whoever's going to be coming on board. Um, we can add the cloud piece at any point, so we could just renew for the service that we currently have. Um, Will there be an extra expense if we renew for the service we have now and then add the add the VADAR? No, they would prorate the they would reduce the cost of the cloud based on when we come on because that's an annual fee for the user. So if we came on um, with only nine months to go, it would be less than that number. Um, they totally understand kind of where we're at. So I think that would be the smart choice for now, is to stay where we are now and allow the new town administrator to, to go cloud-based if that's his choice, um, especially if it's not going to cost the town anymore. It gives us flexibility to go both ways. So I'll make that as a motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Wait, is there anything we can hold you to? I think I'm free to go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Same time, same, same bad yeah. channel. <laughs> All right, approve um, ambulance at the end of the uh, month of July 2016.
it's in the amount of $24,583.71. I'll make a motion of approval to ambulance abatements for the month of July 2016 in the amount of $24,583.71. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Board of Health? No business. Nothing right. oh, about Zika or E. coli or anything? Well, there was, no. And you, there's that tick born, that tick um, uh, presentation. Uh, now, it's going to be tick uh, presentation next Thursday by the uh, health nurse. Uh, but um, no um, reports of any. Um, we haven't had anything, right? No. 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 And we haven't had any um, mosquito issues, right? No. Perfect. Uh, there was the issue of um, appointing uh, Kevin Bernardo for an extended period of time. Yes. I had an email from him today. He um, says because of family issues, he would not be able to continue. Uh, so he does not okay. want to be um, appointed as a uh, health or assisted health uh, for any period of time beyond uh, July. Okay, well, we might as well just go right into that since, so we'll start backwards. Okay. Um, so I'll turn it over to both you and um, Robbie under personnel. So we, are you saying that he's not even going to help our new board of health agent? He's not going to uh, be able to help. Uh, I spoke to actually spoke to Kevin, uh, just uh, quickly. He is does like Charlie said. I guess he sent Charlie an email today that um, he does want to be done on the 31st. He has some family issues, and some family in from out of town. However, he would be willing to um, just speak quickly to the uh, the new incoming person, let him know where he left off, and he is going to be sending him an email um, stating where he was in the progression of his uh, reinspections. Um, if he had any questions, he could reach out to him. But formally, he wanted to be done as of the um, 31st and have a new agent take over on the, the 7th, I guess, is when he's going to be taking over. All right. Um, also, um, when I met with DEP, um, they're going to have, to have um, the new Board of Health agent come in for about a day, maybe a day and a half, up to two days, to do a formal training with them as well. So I think that that's probably a smart move on our part to let him do that. Probably right at the beginning, so then that way he gets that underway. Right, right. You all right with that, Charlie? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, also, on um, that vein, um, I uh, conveyed the, uh, the uh, information that we would like him to be um, new inspector. Derek to go to uh, the soils right. training this fall. Ready for mm -hmm. the over the winter perfect uh, uh, tests. And Jim Aggie is still around too, so he can really help him out as well. So I mean, that, Jim's yeah. really familiar with it, so it shouldn't be that big of a yeah. issue. Yeah, perfect. And I mean, he's strong in, in the health and those <coughs> inspections and you know the cigarette yeah. things and things like that. So I'm not so worried about that. Up to per, by the per, per yeah, per that and then the ongoing right, saga yeah. is right. wary really what, what we should be concentrating on, so. All right, I'll uh, The last Robbie. personnel chair, I'll be um, taking things out of order since we're already talking about Kevin. We'll stay right on the subject. Um, I have a certificate of appointment for Kevin. Um, that is reappointing him as a part-time Board of Health agent um, until the 31st of July which this one is open-ended, but it'll be closing the 31st of July. I make a motion to approve until 731. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, next, we have a letter of resignation from Casey Pitsley. Um, Casey will like to thank the board. She wrote us a quick letter to thank the board, and she will be resigning as of September 1st, 2017. I'd like to have a motion to accept her letter of resignation and send her a thank you letter. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and seconded. Here, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye.
I'm going to change the status form. For that, though. I have a letter of uh, retirement from Althea Brady from the library. This will be effective July 31st. Um, the letter of retirement reads as follows. To the Board of Trustees, Freetown Public Library, as well as it's been my pleasure to serve the town of Freetown, the people of Freetown and surrounding towns as senior librarian for many years. I believe perhaps the senior pot is catching up with me. It is for this reason that I am announcing my intention to retire effective July 1st, 2017. I plan to remain active as a friend of the libraries to support and promote the libraries through the annual book sale at the Strawberry Festival, which people rely upon for their summer reading and lament when the event is over, is rained out. Sincerely, Althea Brady, dated June 28, 2017. Uh, I entertain a motion to accept her retirement and to send her a letter. Um, thank you. Thank you, motion. I'll second it. Motion being seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a change of status form for John Taylor from Patrolman P5, 4 to 2 schedule for the, for the police department. Hourly rate of 2732, educational sentence 3415. Um, reason for change is resignation. Make a motion to approve. I'll second that. I have a motion to approve the resignation of John Taylor. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> um, we should probably ask the police chief to submit um, what, what the next steps he wants to take and have that approved at the next. I know he's alluded to that, um, but um, we need to vote on that and we need to have that for the next meeting so we can move forward. As far as, I, he reached out to me the other day as far as hiring, he's at two vacant positions, one we made last year and this one will make the second vacant position. He has an exhausted list, so he is in the process of coming up with a new list to um, refill those positions. Um, he's shooting for end of August from when he was telling me to have a new list and a new candidate. Well, they have to go through a testing procedure right. and there's old procedure for it. So. Okay, perfect. Do you want it on the next agenda? Either that or the one after, it doesn't matter to me. Next week, my, uh, no, I, I just want to make sure we get. Yeah, it's I just, just right. Before. I just want to get it moving. I think we can go with the next agenda. That's fine. Okay, Allie, can you please mm -hmm. the uh, seventh agenda? Um, we have a letter from the COA for to the selectmen of the town of Freetown, I Victoria. Brownell. I'm reading her her letter and it's <coughs> I Victoria Brownell want to be a member of the board of Freetown Council on Aging. I have there I heard there is an opening. I have been volunteering my time for several years. Um, brown bag, serving lunches, um, morning muffins and ice cream. I like her job. <laughs> I have attended the knitting and yoga classes. I'm a resident of Freetown an assonant for over 20 years. Thank you, Victoria A. Brownell. And I have a certificate of appointment in front of me from the Council on Agent to appoint Ms. Brownell to the Council on Agent Board. Make a motion to appoint. I'll second that. Motion made and second to appoint Victoria Connell Brownell to the Council on Agent Board as a board member. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, I have a change of status form for Robert M. Clemens, probationary call firefighter, paramedic, fire department, hourly rate 1624. This is a new hire. I'll make a motion. Uh, we uh, accept the uh, change of status form and welcome the award. Second. Motion made and second for change of status form. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Fire Chief is said in another one, Laura J. Brock, change of status form. Job as a probationary call firefighter EMT from the fire department at an hourly rate of 1523. This will be a new hire. Make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll form that back. You just got system two. I'm going the yeah, oh, okay. going backwards. All right. Uh, change of 
Employee change of status for Scott P. Sisson. Again, submitted by the Fire Chief for the Fire Department. This is a probationary call firefighter from the Fire Department. I will read of 1320. This also was a new hire. Make motion to approve. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And change of status form, again, submitted by the Fire Chief for Alexander Copeland. Job is probationary call firefighter in the fire department. Hourly rate of 1320. This is a new hire. Make a motion to approve. And I'll second that. Motion, motion made and seconded to approve. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a change of status form from Michael McHugh, senior clerk, submitted by the Board of Assessors. Hourly rate 1885. Um, this will be a step five because he's already employed by the town. And this is a new hire. What step is he on now? Five. He's on step five already? So it should be just trip lateral. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make a motion to approve. I'll second that. Motion made and second to approve. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 And I think that does it. Um. Was the letter sent to the uh, trash company, do you know? Not as it yet, because... Uh, Did you want to send it as... To um, well, or I would like to uh, formulate a letter. Okay. So circulate it. Yeah, let's do so, that. Uh, there's, really, there's really only one major problem. Okay. That happens all the time. All right. Well, I, didn't, I wasn't sure. It's yeah. in my notes right, to remember, yeah. so right. I wasn't sure, and right. I don't want it to uh, fall through the cracks. So. minutes for... Okay, I didn't know if you wanted yeah. to wait that long, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I noticed some complaints about the, the cardboard, the two by two bundled cardboard and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's sometimes the big one is they drop stuff off. Yeah. So um, we have I know, we have five minutes, and um, no one was here before when we went through for uh, public discussion. So I'm sure there's somebody here for public discussion. Is anybody here for public discussion? Well, uh, I like to like we have obviously right now. I mean, we don't know what's going on. I know they were running to them until five o'clock. Uh, they've been running until 7, 8 o'clock. Uh, not the shredder, but the, uh, the conveyor belts. I thought we had restrictions on them not to run them after 4 o'clock, not to run after 4 o'clock. And, and we called the police department, and, and I don't know if there's nothing being done. I can't comment on that right now because we're going into executive session about that, so I'm not going to comment on it until I am able to talk to the board. Um, but I hear you. Um, there'll be a meeting um, scheduled for August 14th with DEP. Um, it'll more than likely be at the elementary school. DEP will be there. Um, Carol Fiola will be there as well. Um, so we'll, we should have some direct answers from DEP at that time. I thought that meeting was going to be uh, was going to be towards the end of August. We were told by you guys it would be towards the end of August. Yeah, there, was, there was never, there was never a, a day set. Uh, the reason I'm saying this, I'm not going to be here. Uh, I am one of the people that I, you know, well, like I said, I got the front seat of the, uh, you know, XL. And I can't, I'm not going to be here until the 22nd. And I would like to be present. Uh, I don't want to change anything for nobody else, but that's where I stand with that. Well, if you're changing, if, I mean, if we're asking to change the meeting later, you're giving, I mean, that's up to the board, I mean, that's up to DEP. That's up to DEP. I, tr I, tried, I don't know if you were here the last time, but I, yeah, DEP right. wanted to go later Correct. to 21st. I think they was there. They wanted to meet us on the 21st. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get it as early as possible, but this, according to them, is the earliest they could, they could do it is the 21st, uh, the uh, 14th. Yeah. I, well, I was wanting to have it this week, but they didn't want to. 
they want well, to I mean, we are, we understand that, we understand that it's tough to, to set up, to set a, uh, a meeting with DEP, but, you know, uh, like I said, I thought it was towards the end of the month. Well, I don't want to cancel the meeting. Let no, me, I let don't me, want you to cancel the does meeting. Does the board either. want me to contact them to see if we can, if, I don't know, do you want to keep it at the 14th? I mean, he's a direct, not only a direct butter, he's the one. Most agreed. Right. Um, well, I'll just sit my thought and just watch, walk the line here. Right. Um, you know, if we can change it to the 21st. I want to be here the 22nd. 22nd. Uh, that would be, uh, That's I, the day you fly in. I, I fly in on, on the 22nd. All right, so the end, if we move it to the end of August. Uh, we're almost pushing it to September at that point, so that's the only problem. Is there something you could give us to either read for you or no, prepare I mean, for us or something? Because right. I don't want to hold every. It's, I, I understand I you're there, right there, you're getting debris and everything. But I want to hold the whole process off because no, no, the faster I, we get it done, I, the faster we can come to a resolution with this thing. And it's not my goal to do that. I mean, the thing is, that, you know, I told Lisa, I have debris in my pool every, almost every day. Uh, I cut my grass every week. There's debris in my yard all the time. Uh, the conveyor belt is right, be, is right there. 8 o'clock at night. 8 o'clock at night, they run in the conveyor belts. Right. Okay. We call the police. I mean, the police can only do so much. You can't blame them. You can't blame them. Uh, you know, we understand that was the that test that they did with the smell. Uh, I've told the board already, the smell is not there every day. It's just like the noise is not bad every day. But, uh, you know, if you do the test two or three times a week, you, there, there's no way the compliance with the smell as well. Because, you know what, if the police department comes in, and they and they and they and they can smell it, and they they bring it up. I mean, they, they don't need to lie. Right. Okay, the board of health has witnessed, and Lisa has witnessed it. Right. Uh, I mean, so I mean, everything is against us. And uh, you know, if you remember correctly, in the beginning of the year, we were told that this would be over uh, for the spring. We, you know, we're going into fall now. And we still have the same problem, and I mean that's why I'm trying to get it as soon as, sooner rather than later. Oh, absolutely, uh, and I don't want to change anything. I just wish I was present, but I don't want to change anything because you know it is what it is. What's the date? What, what, what date are we looking at? What do you know? What date day of the week you fly in on? I fly in on a Tuesday, but I mean it could be delayed. You never know. But I mean I don't want to change for no. Uh, uh, you know I'm one person. I don't want to change for everybody maybe else. Maybe your neighbors. I mean, my neighbors will keep me up updated, and I'm sure you guys will as well. But maybe your neighbors want you there at the same time. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's... The 28th. It's the last Monday in August. My, do my daughter had a flat tire. Uh, my daughter had a flat tire two weeks ago. You want, to do the, want me to ask about the 23rd? See if the 23rd is available. Right. If the 23rd is available, you're only talking change in two days. If that's not available, we'll just stick with the 21st. No, we're on the 14th. I won't be here. I'm, I'm on the 14th. I'm sorry. So we're talking a week here. and a half. Mm -hmm. It also gives them a, a week and a half more to make sure they iron out whatever they need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, 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 I mean, I'm, I fly in. I fly in on. I fly back in on the 22nd. Uh, I mean, the 22nd, I couldn't be here anyway. Right. So the 23rd or whatever. Okay. We'll, we'll stick tentatively with the 14th. Lisa will reach out to the DEP to see if the DEP can reschedule and be the 23rd. If they can be here for the 23rd, we'll go with the 23rd. <coughs> if that's available to the rest of us. Yeah. <coughs> that's fine with me. Charlie, is that fine with you? Yeah. Okay. What, what do we do meanwhile with, uh, uh, with right that? Right now, our hands are tied and we can't discuss it. We can't discuss, discuss it right now. It's all public record. Okay. All right. I thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Okay, it's six thirty-one. Time to meet with the board. Board, board. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
They said I was at the planning board and I'm supposed to be here. Hi, guys. Good evening. Aww. Yeah. Aww. As, soon as, as soon as he said muffins and ice cream, I, you know I had to look right at you. So you can recording. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'd like to call a meeting of the Freetown Water Commissioners to order. Attending are Paulson, Brad Piper, uh, Kevin Demas, Ryan Tran, Bob Parker, and I'm recording the meeting for the And the reason, of course, we're here is to update you guys on uh, our project as we're going to keep you informed. And Ryan will. Uh, do that for us. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Good evening. Um, so on our quest to save some taxpayer dollars, we've, uh, a couple months ago, three, four months ago, we negotiated with DEP to allow us to uh, experiment with uh, essentially bleeding or flushing a lot of water each day uh, to try to move and minimize the water age of the, of the water so that the PHMs don't form as quickly as possible. So we've been working on that. We've also built a hydraulic model. And we did some um, uh, water quality testing in our lab and essentially have, have matched in the, what's been simulated out in that real-time distribution. So we were actually able to get some real results to show that um, by adding some more bleeders, we can get the water age down even further, which we have done over the last month. Um, so and we, the water division keeps getting more and more uh, samples each week, so we're collecting more and more data. Um, you know, we're at the point now where the incoming water from Fall River, right, in the last three weeks has been over the concentration of water. That's allowable at 85 per million. So I think the highest that we saw was actually around 92 coming in. So obviously if it starts off as coming in higher than normal, there's no way that you can get it lower without treating it. Um, but you are getting it to within 5 to 10 parts per billion of the uh, amount that's coming in from Fall River. So. It's, we're getting it down to a point where it, it would be manageable if the incoming water from Fall River was in compliance. Um, DEP only makes um, water systems test quarterly for this, for this type of um, uh, contaminant within the water. Uh, so there is a sample coming up in August, uh, it was mid-August, right? You take your sample? Second week. Second week in August, so it's fairly close. And this is the one of the samples that, that actually counts. Okay, these weekly samples that we're taking are not on the record, it's more for informational purposes. So the real proof of the pudding is going to be in the mid-August the mid -August sample to see what we get. Um, and that's going to allow us to apply that as an average to the rest of the quarterly samples that we've taken over the last year. Okay, and that will, that will show us if, in fact, we are going to be in compliance without needing treatment for this calendar year or this running average year. Okay. So that's, that's the first piece of somewhat good news. It, and to be honest with you, it's very borderline right now. Um, there was some high incoming water earlier this year, which sort of caused the average to be a little higher. So we, we have a little room for this water coming in that has to be below, I think, 90 in order for us to make the um, to make it. So it's going to be close. Um, but the other side of this coin here is that <coughs> we've requested another meeting with DEP because as part of their uh, notice of non-compliance earlier this year, as part of the sanitary survey, they wrote into their two conditions. The first was to submit a permit application for a chemical treat treatment facility, uh, excuse me, a chemical feed system at your existing facility, um, which we did by the end of May. Okay. We've also talked with them about not having to spend that money yet, because if we can get by without treatment, which you guys haven't spent the money yet on that. Um, so that's when permanent approved. Um, the second part of that was that they also wanted you to go ahead and design the treatment plant, which is a big cost, and which I know you guys did get that cost. You did get it, that approved at the spring time meeting. Um, we're trying to, and they, they want that designed by the end of November. Um, and our response to that uh, with DEP was that, well, <clears throat> we'd like some more time to get some more quarterly testing uh, done. and continue to bleed water even through the rest of this year and see what the fourth quarter sample comes in at to see how that result would be. So DEP, upon discussions with them, have 
um, sort of indicated to us that they would be willing to enter into what's called the friendly administrative consent order. It sounds kind of nasty, but it's actually a mutual agreement. The nasty one is, is in, they call it an ACOP, which is an administrative consent order with the penalty. Okay, so they actually assess you fine. That would that would happen if you guys if we just had just ignored them the entire time they would go that route. But these friendly ACOs allow them to sort of um, bypass some of the uh, guidelines regulations as long as a, there's an agreed upon and signed document that has um, essentially deadlines and, and goalposts um, in the road so that you, for items to meet. Okay, so we're hoping that we can meet with them in sometime in early to mid August and just put all the cards on the table with all the bleeding of the water that we've been doing, all the flushing, um, all the samples that we've been taking, um, that we can prove to them that we need some more time through the end of this year, and just sort of prevent you from having to spend that money on us having to design the treatment plant until the very, very last point. They're essentially, from their point of view, they want to see if, as long, they want that treatment facility to be essentially shovel ready so that if anything happened, um, if your levels continued increasing and you weren't in compliance, you could easily, um, you wouldn't have to waste it, you know, six months to a year on having to design a facility. You could just essentially get funds for construction and, and build a facility. So, uh, DP, I talked to him late last week. He said that, uh, this is Jim McLaughlin from Mass DP Southeast. He said that he's getting ducks in a row um, and he's on vacation, but sometime in the second week in August, the third week in August, Maybe the week of the 7th or the 14th, we might be looking at a meeting. It's a little tougher to pull a meeting like this together because they have to get their count legal counsel to, to uh, sit in, um, along with the section chief that comes in for these types of meetings. So once we have a firmer date on when we're going to meet, we'll probably can uh, let, the, let, the, well, let the commissioners know, and then they can invite who they feel is necessary, um, and, and we go from there. So that, I think that's your best, at this point, your best, best chance to entering into some mutual agreement with them instead of um, trying to meet this deadline through the, the end, of, end of November. That's a good point. Uh, is there anything that Fall River can do um, to help when we're ready to flush and do the test samples? It's uh, funny you say that because their, their samples always magically um, come within compliance at the, right, at, the, at the right time each quarter. So they have their own uh, way to sort of beat the system. Um, so we're trying to time our sampling with um, their sampling schedule. Right, but uh, the reason why they're in compliance, it, or if I'm wrong, let me know, is because they're taking an average of all of their all of their system. So not just that one place, not anymore. No, they changed that. Yeah, okay. that, that law changed the all right. five years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, now they call it a locational running annual average. So each sample site has to be. Well, that's right. much better. Right. So that's odd then that they can't get theirs. Well, it depends on how close they are. Their sample sites are to their treatment facility, what the age of their um, water is in the pipe. Uh, you asked the question is there something Fall River can do? They've added uh, aeration to a, a tank. Mm -hmm. uh, they're installing a pressure reducing valve up on Innovation Way. Um, to my knowledge, the, the, la the last I heard, uh, they were testing it late last week, so I don't know. So there is a possibility that we could also be getting water out of there, but uh, that water hasn't been tested. I don't know what the THM levels are. It's just, it's a possibility. Okay. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, not just this past year, but previous years, we have tried to coordinate with Fall River relative to their testing and their pre-chlorination when they turn that on and off. Um, it's worked fairly well. We're on the same testing schedule. Um, but I, I think it could be just a matter of us testing at the beginning of the week, they test at the end of the week. The volume of water that's moved in that time uh, may, uh, may help them. Okay. Um, we're flushing about 180 to close to 200,000 gallons of water a day. Bleeding, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, that only helps them. Right. right? Cuts down their age too. Right. So. It only helps them, though, if it comes across the border at an acceptable limit, because we're not allowing it to grow in our system, but if it's coming over over the limit when it comes across the border, there's nothing, oh, we can bleed till the cows come home, it's not going to drop. That's it's not going to drop. Right. It, it, to, to Ryan's <coughs> point earlier, his hydraulic model had said um, that if we can get the age of the water down to a day, we should be pretty close on what inbound is compared to end of the system. We've accomplished that goal. 
Um, I've seen as little as a two-point jump and as much as, say, a 15, 17-point jump. If, um, we could, if we could test on the same time, uh, right after they test, because they're going to be flushing like crazy when they test, then we should, we're going to get the best possible result, I think. <clears throat> Do they notify us when they're flushing? I know when their pre-chlorination schedule is, and they don't, they don't flush. They don't open the hydrants down by ISP, the former ISP facility right they're, now? They are on a flushing program. They're on a flushing schedule. So uh, if they're moving water, it's with DEP approval. Um, but I don't think that they're actively flushing a hard, hard flush. They're moving water. Um, and I say that because when you're actively flushing, when you're hard flush, you kick up a lot of sediment. Um, and I noticed that when they did do their flushing, we had our bleeders on, and we were getting um, water. It wasn't having time to settle out. So I know we're moving the volume of water. I mean, it's... Do you get um, particular matter when it comes from your flushes out? Uh, yeah, you can, right, right. And then if you kick up that organic matter, then depending on how much residual chlorine you have, then it can then create the THMs that go higher. What they're trying to do is move some water. Um, and typically it's, or the NDS system, like we're doing with bleeders, open up the hydrants, try and move as much water. So, I mean, they're right on the, you know, this past week it was 87 for us. And again, who's testing? Uh, you know, that's why I, we've gone to, I do all the THM testing for, for these purposes now, uh, white water will continue to, so that we have a consistency in the tester. We know the, you know, a little thing is... You take the variable off. Right, and a little thing is how fast that water comes out of the spigot can make a test pass or not. So rather than getting false great news or false terrible news, we're going to stick with the consistency of having the results. That's why we always take a sample at the inbound to make sure right. we know it's coming into the system. Well, yeah, and to speak to that, is there anything in the contract that says that they're going to provide us water below the 80 that's required by the system? It, it's in the contract. The However, they go by their average and go, hey, we're giving it to you at this. And they're not. Yeah. Well, I guess my response, my question would be this. They, they can say all they want, but we're getting water that is tainted, are we not? I hate to use the word yeah. tainted. Yeah. I don't, I don't, no, I don't, well, I don't want to give it. It's what, not tainted at all. What, well, well, it doesn't meet DEP uh, uh, requirements, so therefore, it is not. It is not healthy water, according to DEP. Is that that true? It's far from not. Not. It's not. Not. Not healthy water. Well. Well. Okay. Well. well it doesn't it, meet the. It, it doesn't meet the, the, the standards. But whether, whether or not we agree with that or not, there's a qualification that they're supposed to have to distribute this water, and they're not providing us with that that level of water. It's. We can we can flush we can we can bleed we can do anything we want till the cows come home. If we're getting water that's above it, how can we keep? How can we get we it? Can't. We can't. We can't. So so team. now now I, I'm, I'm my question to this board is when are we going to take legal action against the city of Fall River? Okay, take it immediately. And I I I think we should really investigate that because. We should not be putting out three million dollars, whatever it is, to provide the people with water that meets the standards when Fall River is not doing this. But Charlie, DEP has never said that Fall River is not doing it. Well, is that true? No, they said they can they look at it as a quarterly basis. Right. So, so well, they've never said that. So but, but it's a political. It's a political thing because you got a city of of eighty five, ninety thousand. And you got a town of nine thousand. Who DEP's gonna gonna go with where, where the wind blows? And, and they, they, they go they go by the four samples, and when they look at the sample, the four samples they're in compliance, even though what's coming over our well, into our and, system and we, they're Bob, not. Bob, in and we may be also. Bob, we we take tests. They see the test at at the uh, distributing point. Does not DEP? See that? Those are special yes, samples. four times a year. So that was because we weren't moving enough water. That was if, one if, of the reasons. If, if I could just so we know, the regulations are we're a, what's called a consecutive system. Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand. Um, 
DP does not get into the IMAs, don't, does not get into the contracts with who we decide to buy our water from. So DP's regulations are not going to be enforced that way. They're going to say, and they have said, and we've gone down this road, Charlie, that um, you folks choose to buy water from Fall River. You folks choose to buy water that may, in fact, at some points in the time of the year, come over higher than what's the allowable limit. You folks choose to then have to treat that in some manner, whether it's a bleeding program, whether it's a treatment facility. Um, so part of it is, is who we buy our water from and who we choose to buy our water from. Um, but we have gone down this road. We've, ex we've, we've looked and, and spoken with town council. Uh, and if you look at our contract, that's what's enforceable but with us in the city of Fall River. And I'll tell you the same thing. If New Bedford happens to have a problem, and, and well, we can then choose another method, which is why five, six years ago we did an alternative analysis to purchasing water from Fall River. Our own well, bringing the... Um, so, uh, and most the cost effective at that time, it was determined by the Water and Sewer Commissioners that was to stay with Fall River and try to negotiate a better deal. So that brings my next question to you, Ryan. Uh, a cost estimate of making uh, a well field up our own. Um, a ballpark of that, I don't mean you have to say that right now. If you yeah, feel no, it was one of the alternatives. I mean, we, we looked at um, the well that's actually under our teaching conditions now at the existing oh, filter right. site that really is not in a great location because it's right next to the highway. But uh, we looked at... Um, well locations throughout the Santa Village. A couple of locations, but they actually weren't many, I right. remember. Right. And just to let you know, that, that process, we tell you start the new source process, is a three to five year process from mm -hmm. start to finish, which can cost anywhere between, say, by the time including construction of a facility, if you have to treat the water as well, between two and two and five million dollars. Mm -hmm. Not to mention you might need a distribution storage tank if you're now pumping the water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is another two to three million dollars. So there was there was an option on the table in the alternatives analysis, like you know, it was like five years ago now, that did say if you wanted to be self-sustainable, produce your own water, and store it, and use Fall River water as emergency, you know, if you ever had to. You know, but it seemed like at the time that was a lot to chew off and um, that price tag. That was three or four years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. At least yeah. So it's probably more money right. now. But it, and again, keeping in mind. Plus. Keeping in mind, the alternative was to get the existing site into compliance. Over those five years, we've seen uh, an increase in um, businesses located that are going to need the water. Uh, we've, we've learned that there are some, um, when the filters are on, there are some fire uh, protection issues uh, that we're addressing with the new valve uh, project, um, which then led this board to uh, an agreement with, uh, in consultation with EPG, we need a bigger facility. We just can't accommodate the volume of water needed at our existing facility. So I think there's, I, mean, I think you need to have a little bit of a historical basis how we got to this point where we've made this decision. I don't discount your argument. Um, it's one we've had several times. Um, I remember, I mean, to the point, we, we've gone to city council. We've had city councilors come to our, I, I went and took, I went and took samples, uh, um, uh, out, just outside where Fall River was providing water. They were all over. Bring all this information to DEP, and that's what they tell you. You all have agreements to purchase water from them. So, I just, I, I'm... I see it. It's a political decision on the part of DEP. It, it's not, it doesn't okay. have anything to do, with my opinion, based in, in legality, but that's it. And, and uh, Kevin, I, I, I understand the, the facts, yeah. but it, I think there's... Room to change. Yeah. Yeah. We've been treating the water for 10 years. The mm -hmm. town has been treating water for 10 years. Right. And the current facility that we have was put in there as a temporary fix. That's correct. That's right. With the hopes that it was going to be improved. Now mm -hmm. we're under the gun because we've gone through right. six years of, well, actually two reports, they're mm -hmm. three years apart. Right. And now they're coming down on us. I mean, yeah. I don't know the other, anywhere else you can get water from. I mean, uh, you could, we could have brought a line over from, from New Bedford, but I mean, that's going to be about $5 million just to bring the line over. I mean, you're talking about bringing a big substantial line to feed this side of town. I mean, when we looked at it, it was $100 a foot. 
to bring the line yeah. a couple of years ago. And that was a, 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 a just a real rough test. You also pick up customers. The availability is spread the, the system if you bring the line. We looked at that option. It's about $200 a foot. Mm -hmm. is, is, is it's all in cost with contingencies and police details and right. paving area. Uh, the plus side, you would pick up the school. Yeah. Um, but there is very, the community here is very spaced out. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of fence development along the route. So the bank of the buck on that. You can pick up Chickaway right. Road and Bullock Road, right. basically, and then right. down to uh, and all the subdivisions and off of it. We even tried about looking to going through the state forest mm -hmm. to shorten up the route, you know? That doesn't get accustomed that way. I, no, just, um, I, mean, uh, I, I, I just don't know, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just I want to refocus here in that this is where we're at with DEP. They've accepted the fact that we're going to... Now, I, I don't know, Ryan, you've dealt with them a lot more than I have on, on a much higher level. Um, I don't know amenable, how amenable they are to us coming back with another alternative that we might be looking into doing. Um, well, you also have a contract with Fall River. Yeah. A mm -hmm. 10-year contract. Oh, yeah. Well, that's well, a very I, good point. I, I, I don't know I, how you're going to break that contract. Oh. So now, we're, now we're back to legal. They're going to sue us for because they can't sell us tainted water? Well, I think you guys ought to... Take a walk and go out and Sorry, it's not on the agenda. Yeah, I, 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 it's not similar. Can I get back on point? Yeah. Have we used any filters this year? No, no we can't turn them on. Okay. Um, is the date set mandated by that specific August 24th date mandated by DEP, or is that an arbitrary date that we pick and we can, can do in conjunction with Fall River's test? I'm sorry. You, you said you August 24th, you're going to do that high? Testing, testing. Second week testing is August. the second week of second August. Week we, of August. DEP, uh, that changed a few years ago, too. The EPA said that you need to, these are your specific test dates, um, and you need to stick with them. Uh, so we are on the same testing schedule. DEP purposely put us on the same testing schedule, along with Westport as a city of Fall River, with the thought that Whatever they're doing to be in compliance, and again, understanding that you need to be in compliance four times a year. You strive to be in compliance every day. Absolutely. Um, so that's why, Charlie, I get a little bit, when I hear words like tainted and stuff, it, there is not a water system in the country that you're going to be able to test every day and they're going to be in 100% compliance. We strive every day to, to, to stay in compliance. That's why we test four times a year. So, yes, we're on the same testing schedule as the city of New Bedford. I will coordinate with them to say, okay, exactly what day are you taking your test? That was my question. Yes. Yeah. yes. So the date's That's not specific, it's that second It's the week, week. correct. All right. So you're going to try to set up with four of us, so we, we do the test set up when or yes. after, Yes. so this, they've moved a lot of water? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ryan, how far back was the uh, uh, THS, they were 100, the rule was 100, and then they dropped it back to 80? Uh, it's going to be 10 years. It's now. probably about, it's when we had to put the filters, so and that's the reality. It was 100. And the EPA, so understand that this is the Clean Water Drinking Act. It's the EPA, federal government, that makes the rules and regulations. Local DEPs are, uh, are charged with enforcing them. So even the DEP and the EPA argue on certain things. Um, but in this instance, they changed it from 100 to 80, uh, which immediately took us out of compliance on our right. running average. Uh, put the filters in, Fall River has said that they were going to try to improve some things. They are improving things now. They've changed miles of pipe, uh, they've changed tanks, they've added aeration. Um, we've seen improvement. I'm, I'm not getting it inbound at 140, 180, 200, I'm not getting that. Now I'm getting it closer to. This past week it was inbound, it was 87. So I mean, and, and quite honestly, to be honest, it, it, that somebody just Shaking the bottom, and I'm not saying somebody's doing that. I'm saying that's how simple it's easy it is to go from 87 to 77. Yeah. You just shake that bottom for 30 seconds. So, um, that so again, we got an inbound coming in better. It's not what I'd like it to be, but it's promising that we're moving enough water that we're only seeing the tell you know, sometimes a five point to 15 point jump. Whereas, even with the filters on, I was getting a 30 to 40 point jump in the summertime without moving water, and that's with the filters on. Definitely an improvement. Yeah. Kevin, have you, did you say that the, the intake uh, position may change to innovation way or? We have the, uh, 
innovation way, the head pressure, the, the, uh, the pressure was too high. Okay, and the thought was, if it's coming inbound at 100, 125, that's, that's too high, uh, because down in the village it would be, you know, through the roof. So, um, the thought was that, yes, if we got innovation way up, uh, it's a shorter distance coming now from an aerated tank, because again, if you aerate in the tank, it gets rid of the TF gems. Um, but, like I said, they had to put the PRV in the pressure reducing valve in. Uh, whether the testing is complete on that, I, I, I'm unsure. If that's the case, then we can start to see, hey, let's see, what the, the, let's see what inbound would be from there. And if that's the case, and we're getting a better inbound from there, then yeah, we, we may have a, a, an opportunity to, uh, to revalve. Um, if, when I say revalve, close one valve, open another valve. Okay, not, not in, not would we need valve. a reducing valve just to reduce the pressure down? That's what they're doing it for. They're putting it in there. They're putting it in Yeah, they were... Uh, they, I say for us, but it's for the it's for the park too. But it's going to help us. They had a grant that they uh, were able to use uh, some of their money. Um, so the hope is that that's going to to help. That's good. Last question I had, Lisa. I know you okay. want to move on. Yeah. How long, Ryan, will it take to de to design? Roughly, how long will it take to design the new building or facility if you if you had four to six months? That long. So we're already inside that window. If we decide at the end of the summer this isn't working, you actually won't have time by the October, the November deadline to. Yeah. The, what surprised me at first was that this whole time the understanding coming out of the meeting that we all thought um, was we were, this was the plan was to bleed water and get to the summer and see how we were, and then DP had reminded us about that deadline and I was just like, you know, wait a minute, we had, yeah, yeah, we, we had walked out of that meeting, yeah. right. So we said, well, you know, we're, we need more time here. Like, this is not something that they just, it's expensive. You guys understand that this is not, it's a process. It's not fair if they have to spend this money, if it's just going to sit on a shelf and never ever get built. We always say that's the perfect design, the one that it gets built, but. Um, we may be able to yeah. extend that out. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Right. Say maybe a we'll late we'll spring yep. or, and then, or put a caveat on it if, if they, you know, THL models have to be THL models have to be a certain concentration. If if they're above that point, then start to design as of this date. It might be something like that. Maybe we can work into it. They see that we're cooperating with them, and they've been actually. I thought they've been very flexible with us in, uh, when, when we had those meetings. I think so, the key is communication. Yeah, You've been they, in constant they know we're not trying to get out of it. Right. They, you know, a, a stall. Um, right. I know that you know when we're not ignoring them. Right. And Fall River is helping us out too because I mean yeah, they, they have they been. move forward with their uh, pressure valve so we can try to suck water in off that. Yeah, way. it worked for Westport, so DEP should have an example. Say, well. Well, same system work for Westport, it, it should work for Freetown. So. Well, and, and it's only been recent that they've even looked at that as a preferred treatment method. Uh, again, I can remember arguing with DP, well, you need to flush, you need to flush. If it's inbound over 80, I can flush all day long, it's not going to help. Well, you need to flush, you can't just waste water. Now, it's a, it's, a, it's a reliable and relatively inexpensive treatment method that keeps people in compliance. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of negotiations with Fall River, a lot, <coughs> the board has. We've been to a lot of meetings with them. They've been out, they come out to our meetings. So they've been out not too yeah. long ago to our meetings, the, the three of them came out. I mean, everybody's on the same page trying to get the thing done. And this isn't something that just cropped up. This falling off for 10 years. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't we schedule a meeting for uh, beginning of September? If you're going to know somewhere between the second week in August, then maybe at the beginning of September we should reconvene and meet in Why don't we let you know when we're going to have the meeting with them? So you guys you guys can come, or one of you guys, or two of you guys, or three of you guys can come to the meeting okay. and join us okay. at DEP. I mean, okay. you guys have the final say on whether we're going to move forward or not. That's fine. Why not your date to move forward? Yeah, yeah, as soon as we get the table. Yeah, okay, Jim is uh, working to get a date, as Ryan yeah. said. He's, yeah, he, he just talked to me Friday. So. Good. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ice cream or muffins? No. <laughs> <laughs> Probably ice cream. Probably ice cream. Right. Ryan. Ryan. Sorry, can I bother you for one yeah. more minute? Um, did, um, um, I need a motion. Jack ever talk to you no. about no. checking out the oh, land across you. from the um, <laughs> elementary school? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, 
both sides. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But he didn't ask you. Okay. Thank you. As I know, it was signed three times, and there's a couple of postings, post office and juniors, I believe. These three times, you mean? Yes. Currently, we have it on the town website. The town has now has a Facebook site, and we we're doing it on the which the new town website is being rebuilt as we speak to include more. Um, hopefully, we'll actually be able to get the articles right on there also. Um, so anybody at any time, two o'clock in the morning, can be sitting in the living room reading the articles if you like. And you know, Jackie reads her whole spiel at the beginning of the meeting, so she posts that and notices. So at the juniors. Um, uh, there's a couple of places in Asuna and a couple East of places Freetown. East Freetown. So, um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have, I, I know what you're saying. I've been attending town meetings for 15 plus years. Mm -hmm. And you have a hot topic, you're going to get people to go. If it's everything's wonderful in town and there's no hot topics and everything's wonderful, people are more complacent and they, and they don't go. Um, but I, I mean, you can, I tell my neighbors, I mean, but it's whether they want to go or they don't want to go. And I could, could we reach out to the schools and have it put on there? It was. It was on there, yeah. board board too? Yeah. Um, we put it on the town signs on both sides of town. Um, I mean, I don't care if we get little signs and put them out. Well, there is some issues with that. Because there is. You're not supposed to put out signs. It's that we have a bylaw in town. The 1120 yes, mm -hmm. is uh, a zoning bylaw, which it does allow for political signs, uh, but you're going to have to buy the signs. I don't know the last time you guys, if you ran, if you have had to buy signs, but they're expensive. Somebody has to put them up, somebody has to take them down. If they blow around, somebody has to go pick them up, that kind of stuff. Um, so there is some issues to the little, the little signs. No. Usually those people, somebody buys those and puts them up. So um, all of our meetings are on YouTube. So, I mean, if you... People can watch the meetings. Oh, after the fact, that you're right. But, uh, you know, I know that we have the website and we have uh, a few 
other things online, but a lot of people don't look at it. I think the numbers that I heard uh, prior to this meeting, it's about 10% if that of the residents in town go on these sites. I think that's the numbers I've heard, um, which is, means 90%. explore some signs and maybe even go as far as uh, doing a mailing. That's a, that's, you're talking a lot of money. Well, you're talking a lot of money. If you want to do a mailing of what, the whole warrant? No, no, not the whole warrant. Oh. No, no. Fly okay. a notice. Fly a notice. And maybe a few of the bigger topics. You know, uh, at most, uh, it would so have to be something apolitical. It doesn't. Yeah, you can't absolutely. have a slight one way or another. It's just no, no, no. basically what it is. Absolutely, there's no question of that. Strictly facts. No, no, it can't be like that either. It's just gotta be date, time, place, date and what's time. On that's it. it. You cannot say here. These are the ho these are the items that we're going to be discussing at town meeting. You you can't even get into that. All you can say if you want to write if you want to say, you know. Um, Take a, a cover of the of the warrant itself. Yeah, that that's apolitical. But you can't touch that with a ten foot pole. Well, I, I don't know. That's true. I don't know what the, the regulations are as far as yeah. <coughs> But uh, if we could agree that a eight and a half by eleven could the mailing. We can talk about content after the fact, and after we decide whether to do or not. I, I, I can't agree. I need to see how much it's going to cost. And right. Yeah. Well, and whose budget's going to come out? Is it going to come out of right. the FinCom budget? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're talking a lot of money. It's not. Well, I, I don't know what it is. Both should use 37 get, cents a stamp. Uh, 47 cents a stamp. Uh, yeah, but yeah. his mass may run for a lot cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Shrink the size but down. You, well, there's, from my own experience, uh, writing this year, I, in it, I did it more costly, I think, than I could have. Uh, but there is, through the Postal Service, there are services That's that right. will uh, do a mailing for you. And it, it's got to be significantly uh, less for bulk than it would be for, um, you know, first-class mail. Yeah. First, first class mail. Um, so that, uh, I think it's worth probably exploring Coming up with a figure. Uh, once we have the figure, we could decide if we want to proceed with it or not. It, I mean, I don't find it a problem worth trying. Uh, it's it's not going to be something where it's going to be like a dollar uh, a house or anything like that. If you did a mail, it, and why wouldn't you go for that? Um, but um, it might it, it could be worth uh, exploring with the uh, postal service uh, to see. What it, and like I say, uh, I, my my mailing was uh, a little bit higher than um, I think would be for a town meeting. I think you need to be really if you're going to put a wait, reminder. Wait. There's a town meeting on the first Monday in June, whatever that date is, mm -hmm. and that's one thing. Right. But if you're yeah. going to put something else on there, that's totally different. Mm -hmm. All right, look. You know, there's a number of points that go along with this. One of them is your point you just made, and another one is cost. Cost, content, and mm -hmm. all that. Uh, but tonight, uh, if, if I can get an agreement that we would be willing to do this possibly, assuming that the cost is reasonable, uh, then I will get facts and figures. And uh, then we can talk about content once we agree that we could be willing to do this. Well, I think that we should have fa facts of how much it's going to cost before you can have, have no, no, me no. say yes or no. No, no, no. no but you know, maybe you didn't follow my train. No, I followed you. Yeah, but I mean, there's no point in me trying to figure out that it's going to be five cents or five dollars a house. If you're totally against it, 
I'm not against anything. I don't have the, the information. You can't make a decision without the right information in front of you. So the only thing I need to know is how much is it going to cost. Well, yeah, right. I, I think right. that's, that's to George's point. He's, he's willing to do some investigation. No, he's, he asked me if I was for it or against it. And then he said, oh. if I'm for it, he'll look at it. If I'm against it, he yeah. won't. I can't say I'm for or against it until I know how much it's going to cost. Well, that's... Let me, let me rephrase it. Would you agree to this if the cost was reasonable? Sure, I guess if right. the cost was reasonable, but I don't know what reasonable is. I need to look at the... Uh, George, no, go no, give me the information and get it for me, and then I'll make a decision. Yeah. And plus, I'm one of them. There's three of us. Okay. All right. So, well, well, my point would be, go, go get a, a figure. Okay. Well, first of all, I think you should probably find out the number of households that um, yeah. would touch... And off the top of my head, I'm going to say, you know, say between three and four thousand house right. households. That's right. Okay, or, or postal. And just just so you you're aware, is going in the postals um, in the uh, uh, route. They got to have only residential or residential and uh, business. So I would suggest you go with only residential. Right. You know. um, but. There's a number of different um, methods, and you you can talk to the postal service themselves. You've got to be watchful, of whether it's postal service or some uh, private enterprise pointing in, uh, and and get a figure. Um, and you know, once we know the figure, we can go whether or not it's going to be successful. We we think it's going to be successful. And, and you can ask Jackie because Jackie does. Those some of those for the dogs licenses oh, and stuff gosh. like that. So you can ask her. She's going to have that information right no, there. No, I, I will get that. I, yeah. I have talked to the post office, mm -hmm. and uh, and, I, and I was I, I'm familiar somewhat with the system you're talking about, and it'll be relatively easy to get a number. Mm -hmm. Because what I, what I was saying to you was, I, I don't want to be chasing my tail. If you think the concept in general. No, I don't think the concept okay. is bad. I just no. don't know what the cost that's is, that's all. Yeah. Right. No, that, and that's perfectly reasonable. Um, okay, so we'll work on that. Um, and all right, the signs you guys don't think are practical? Or we have a bylaw. Well, okay. yeah. I personally don't think the signs would be I don't. I don't. Think no. that they're going to be that. I just see it in the yeah. other oh, towns. Yeah, right. Usually, one party does that. Somebody yeah. that's got a hot button, like you were saying before, wants to vote yes on question three or whatever, article two. Yeah. They're the ones that raise money, put up the signs. Oh, okay. and that, that could be. It's not usually yeah. the, the central government that does it, the local government. Okay. Because uh, the signs I've seen don't, I mean, I've seen the signs you're talking about, but I've also seen signs. All they say is town meeting Saturday. systems out there. I know that we do have blast systems or we've like got the police yeah, and the reverse, reverse nine one one. 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 Mm -hmm. And that, okay. that could be something that you could use um, to inform people that there is a special town meeting or annual town meeting, whatever. Okay. It's referred to as uh, reverse nine one one. Is that something that's possible, reasonable, um, desirable? I would say off the top of my Yes, I, I think we'd have to speak. Probably have to speak with the chief of police. Right. See what okay. the mechanism is. It's it's run through the police department because they are mm -hmm. communication. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, and and the, the big request here. Uh, and this came out of a conversation with the COA actually. Um, they tell me that a lot of the seniors don't come out because they don't like to go out at night to drive. Um, and I know in the past, uh, going back a few years, we used to have our town meetings on Saturday afternoons, I believe. I'd like to reconsider that. And currently it's a bylaw. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to do a bylaw change for that. Okay. Two sort of thirds go to the town meeting, but 
I don't think the turnout was that successful on the Saturday afternoons either. Everybody complains about when it is, but when you change it around, it doesn't seem to change much. We didn't really have a big turnout. And some of that was the younger people saying, well, we have obligations and all that. Well, uh, I, I, it'd be nice I, if it didn't get over at midnight. I agree with that. Right. <laughs> but that's more what was on topic and how much stuff we had. Maybe we can start them earlier. But yeah, I think 7.30 is late. I think that that's one thing that we could probably change. If we did the special at 6 and we did our regular town meeting at 6.37 or immediately following immediately instead following. of not making a time, I think that that would speed things up. Because remember, we do we do our special at 7 and then we don't start our town meeting until 7.30. Sometimes we're done by 7.15. So if we can just go from one to the other immediately following, I think you speed things up a little bit. Like I don't that. know if you have to post time and date specific, though, when you post the, the town meeting. I don't know. I'll have to find that out. You kind of have. I think that's where... But I agree with you. If we slide it all down, yeah, it would be a lot. It would be Google's. But again, that's another bylaw change. Oh, uh, it's time. Mm -hmm. It's just the date. Mm -hmm. First, it's the date. First Monday in June. Yeah. First yeah Monday. But uh, the, the issue too with weeknights is uh, I have no idea this number, but many people commute. You know, before one of the reasons why it's later. That's the reason why yeah. it's later. I mean, but, so yeah. now you're doing six of one, half dozen of the other. You know. Yeah. You can't please everybody, unfortunately. It's not easy. Um, and the only other notification I had, would do the local newspapers take these uh, announcements? Would they print them in their paper? Do, they, do we do that now? No, it's a thousand a week. How much is the yeah. to do an ad? Well, not an ad, but a, a legal posting? It depends on how big you do it. Yeah. Well, you can do it under the f not free stuff, but there's like there's coming. Less, less of the free stuff, yeah, even the funeral notices, if not free anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, we have to have postings. I, on the zoning, when I was on the zoning board, we used to require postings, and the people kept coming back and saying, hey, you know, it's costing us four to five hundred dollars per newspaper to, to oh. post at this this thing. It was up to the point where the zoning, to go in front of the zoning board, between, because of the postings that require Standard Times and Herald News, mm -hmm. and the $150 fee was almost $1,000 going to the zoning board. Yeah. That's, the number of people that that's, the, that's, that's why we're trying to get into the modern media that, you know, some, even right. some of the... You know, the UMass Dartmouth has a marketing program, and sometimes there's like, not internships, but they have to do a project, right? Their seniors have to do a project. It might, it might be smart of us to ask them to do a project on how to increase the audience at a town meeting for a town. And, I think, that, and I think that that would be a really awesome idea. Now you're getting, you know, we're thinking, old, you're thinking more old school, we're thinking more new school. Maybe there's a way to combine those things and maybe we should approach you, Master Thomas, and ask, ask them um, as a project for, you know, for the seniors or whoever, um, they might be interested in doing that. And they can, they can give us some, all kinds of different ideas. Because that's a common goal, right? To get as many people at town meeting and to have a very diverse uh, crowd. But I think that, you know, okay, again, you can always give them all the information, but whether they get in their car and go is a totally different thing. So we see a voter turnouts. Some days it's rainy and nasty, voted and nobody comes. Mm -hmm. Other days it's, you know, if there's a hot button and everybody turns out, and it, that's it's just like tonight. Sometimes we have 20 people in the crowd, and sometimes there's no one. So it all depends. But I think that yeah, I think by putting our heads together, we can come up with something. But I think let's let's try to reach out to UMass and see if they would be interested in looking at that as a project. <coughs> better the turnout, the better. I, would, I mean, that's what we're based on. It's why we have the three selectmen and the, the, the town gets to decide the issues. It's the purest form of democracy we have. Yeah. Uh, so who would you like to approach UMass? Um, I go to their business department and talk to their, mar mm -hmm. their marketing. Okay, great. You will do that? You would like the, no, the one, of the, one of your members? I'd do that. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Sorry, I can do my job.
<laughs> problem. I was going to say, I write now there every day. So. Yeah. Perfect. here around us that have different billing systems than we do. Our billing system is very straightforward. We use X number of units, it's X number of dollars. Um, there are systems that I see in other towns is the more you use, you go to a different scale. And it's uh, for the homeowner that use making that numbers now. Less than 100 units, the charge may be $10 a unit. But if you go over the 100 units, and you're between 100 and 1,000 units, it's $14 per unit. So if you're a big user, you actually pay more. And I think that would be very beneficial for us, because the, the real problem that we had with uh, funding was that uh, we didn't feel that the homeowners on water should be saddled with the total cost. Uh, but now what we're doing is we're shifting the cost to all residents. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if we looked at what some of these other towns are doing and hitting up to big users, which typically will be big commercial users, it would be quite an offset. Um, so I, I think given them some of the literature that I received, but the concept is there, it's straightforward. Um, I don't know if they're following up and checking with other towns or just not doing anything, but I thought I would present it to you guys and see what you think. Well, George, it's up to the... Uh elected Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners to set their rates. Uh, you know. So I think you should bring all the evidence you have to them and discuss it with them. Okay. Uh, be your committee and their committee can sit down and reach some mutual ground. Okay. Uh, one issue I heard just because of the last meeting is they want to move as much water as they can. They're dumping water on the side of the road to move as much water. So if we put a tax on to say we don't want you to move, any business is going to look at that and say, well, if I get a, the more more water I move, the more I'm going to pay. Uh, it's not an incentive to use water. What they were telling us a few minutes ago is they want to move as much water as they can. So, well, well, I, that, if, if I could interject it one minute, my suggestion just to, is to bring the, the rates, rate structures. Um, hey, maybe every uh, water uh, department in Bristol and Plymouth County, and they can see what's good and what's bad, and go from there. Uh, I, I I know that yes, we want to you want to move water as much as you can, uh, but there's a financial responsibility I think to everyone that we try to uh, do what we can. With uh, water and sewer rates, so they can be self-sustaining. Uh, I mean, to your point, what's happening now is, is a technical issue, which I have my personal opinion based on nothing. But I think we will wind up having to build a filtration unit, and uh, that would be a good way to pay for it. And uh, if we do build it. using wasting water just to bring uh, some indicator down is going to be a moving point. If we do have to build it and we do have to treat it, then we don't want to move as much water because that's just going to eat up our filters faster. Exactly. But in this current situation, for those THMs to bloom, it has to sit. The longer it sits, the more they bloom. So right. if we flush them, the THMs get knocked out. I'm not a water guy. I listen to the water guys. They've been telling us about this right. for a year now. 
So that's the only reason I, I'm saying this. Maybe I'm all wrong, but no, no, I think from what I'm, what I'm hearing, that's why they, they, they did it in Westport. That's why they're trying to do it yeah. here. Aren't they allowing us to flush a certain 200,000 gallons yeah. a day. That, I mean, like, as in they're just giving us an excess in order to flush, but we're not getting charged for that. Not charged for right. yeah. It behooves them to do it because each, the same, we're moving water for them and they're not moving for them metered, too. Right? Yeah. Right. Each, yep. each yeah. liter is metered so mm -hmm. that they have the evidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, another unrelated topic. Uh, the uh, use of uh, reserve funds. Uh, as a finance committee, I'm not aware that we have a policy. And uh, the question is, is there a policy? And should we have a policy if we don't? There should be a policy. Um, I, I think the policy changes with the board, not not the board of selectmen, but with whomever is on the board of finance. So, right, um, and I think it's something that every chair should develop and and vote on for a committee. Okay, and we will do that. But the reason I bring it up to you is, I think you should have some input. Well, uh, that's fine. Um, you know, our policy is. Basically, whether we forward it over to the That's all we do, finance right? committee or whether we don't forward it over to the finance committee, there may be some reason why we feel like it's unnecessary that they should go back and try to find something in your budget. So at that point, we would say no, but usually we just, you know, forward it over to you. Well, the, the reason I would like a written policy that mm -hmm. we both agree on is because the way it is now, what you just described, is what happens. Right. And my guess is if I was running one of the departments and I knew that if I went $10,000 over or whatever, I know I can just go get it out of the So if we had a written policy that each department had would have, and they, depending on what the policy says, they may be forced then to stick with it in their budget. Mm -hmm. Have it just be truly an emergency. An emergency, because I mean, it's been when it's just emergency, and then it's also been when they've depleted their funds. So I think exactly. that kind of stuff has to be ironed out. Right. So uh, I mean, we can write a policy, uh, but I bring it up to you guys. To no, I definitely want some input in it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Right, so and maybe Kim too. Yeah. On our side, what are you looking for? Something more of a description of why they're requesting the fund, the reserve fund transfer? Well, yeah, basically, you know, what would you think is appropriate? So, if you give us five reasons that are appropriate, we, we can adopt those five reasons, and if we think there's some other reasons, we can add to them. Uh, you know, I think we will discuss this at future meetings, and we'll come up with our own reasons, but. So that we have yours also. Okay. You can see him in the back corner. Oh, sorry, Kevin. That, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I thought you were just scratching. Yeah, scratching. there's not much there. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reserve fund transfers, aren't they not Mass General Law uh, yeah. specific? So I would caution that any kind of process policy uh, doesn't counter Mass General Law. I would also caution uh, that. FinCom members come and go, uh, and what you might find is a good reason this week is not a good reason uh, to another member. And being a deliberative body, a policy like that when it, when it comes relative to reserve fund transfers and things like that, um, I think they shouldn't be dismissed out of hand. I think the whole deliberative body, that being the FinCom, should hear each and every one of them and, and, and vote on the merits of those uh, and not dismissed out of hand simply because they may or may not fit into a certain category. Keeping in mind Mass General Law, these are for unseen um, expenses. So I would just, um, you know, it's not often that we have to, and we don't want to go to the FinCom to ask for more money. Uh, but I just. I think a, a 
of it more as a guideline, sure. I guess, you know what I yep. mean? Like a checklist, like did they hit this criteria, that mm -hmm. criteria? Right, right. You don't want to go ask right. for, for funds if you've got $100,000 right. sitting in there. Or, and was this truly an emergency? Absolutely. It, like, didn't we talk about this when mm -hmm. we were doing budgets or did we not? Right. But so keep, I think that for me, it's more of a checklist kind of. Absolutely. Which, which sort of creates a policy of, mm -hmm. of I guess policy is a, is a hard word to use, but a checklist or a guideline or something like, yeah. Paul? Reserve fund is for unforeseen, unexpected right. expenditures. That's what I've always thought right. of. If, if, a, if, a, if you have your budget, and then all of a sudden, let's say for some reason we had a big fire, and now the overtime budget was exceeded. Mm -hmm. That's unforeseen. There's no way the chief could have figured that out. Right. Right. That's yeah. unforeseen. Exactly. Brad? As chairman for three consecutive terms almost, say nine years, we started instituted a policy for, for unforeseen mm -hmm. expenditures. Plus, we instituted a policy with a, a policy with the selectmen that nothing was going to come in front of the finance committee that had not been reviewed right. by the board of selectmen. Right. So if there was any foolishness, the selectmen would not sign it, right. and it wouldn't come to. If it didn't have your signature, I never brought it up to the board. Right. We came up with a form that that we voted on, and then we checked the box saying we can't approve a, a, a reserve fund transfer, but we can approve sending it off to, to the finance committee. We were getting all kinds committee. of foolish requests. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing a letter right now. Read rationale why it's in right. front of us, included with it that we can send along to them right. so they know where. But you've got to be going. careful that you don't snuff out, again, some things that are unforeseen expenditures, whether it's in personnel or uh, when we have an extremely hot winter and uh, the DPW runs out of overtime funds or. Uh, you know, th there's so many things that play into this. You've got to be very careful what you do. Sounds good. Anything else on your checklist? Okay. <laughs> I've got one thing. It's not on my checklist. I'm just going to give it to you so you can share it with your board. Oh, you time. always give it to me, George. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Not for discussion today, because I know. Uh, All right. Did that, did I give you three copies? Of Just this and two. this. Two. Oh, no. no, 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 no. That's you. Okay. okay. It's just an article that I read. <coughs> might be interested in. All right. I'll give it to Allie to um, scan and send to us. Thank you. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. I mean, don't ever hesitate and to you know say you want to have an update or come in even quarterly or whatever. Yeah. Cause we should do this periodically. Yeah. Not too often. Not too often, but often enough. <laughs> Thank you. Can we go into the other rooms? Finish our meeting. What do we got? Just a minute? Is that it? Oh, actually, we're we're gonna um, we're going to executive, we're going to executive it. session. Oh, so, you're going there, so. so we're gonna go in there. Oh, okay. So are we going back? No. So okay. I don't think we don't need to come back. No. no. Okay. I think we're done with our agenda. Right now. We're we're done with the agenda. I thought we Charlie, had one you were done with the agenda. Good. 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 Make a motion. Uh, I'll have somebody make a motion to go into an executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body. And the chair so declares Sullivan Cycling versus Lisa Pacheco, Robert Josen, Charles Sullivan individually and members of the select board. Under Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 21A3, I'll make that motion. Okay, and for form, so to speak, I will second that. Okay. Not to. Not to. We can do an open session. I'll pull the members, uh, Mr. Sullivan. I always want to say Officer Sullivan. I'll <laughs> Okay. 
Aye. And Mr. Chico, yes. Thank you. Uh, what exactly? 